so nice to see so many people here. And uh, my name is Tavi Must. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Rangeforce, and over there is my colleague, CTO Margus Ernitz, so he knows everything about our platform and cyber as well. But 10 minutes demo, it's for, for me. Uh, so I'm going to show you two demos and something else. Uh, and, but before we start, just a few things about Rangeforce. So we started a couple of years ago, almost three years ago. Uh, we are alumni of uh, Barclays Techstars uh, Accelerator here in New York. Headquarter is in New York. Development is in Estonia. We've got eight passionate people right now, six super passionate engineers. And, uh, and the major customers uh, we work with, uh, Barclays, Microsoft, Pipedrive, and um, now we got more and more of them. Okay, so um, the two cornerstones we really have for our company is that, or two major beliefs is that uh, today everybody, every IT person is a defender. So if developers don't write secure codes, security people can't do much to help to be safe. So it starts from coding, secure coding, and secure operations. Now, unfortunately, most of developers have no good idea what this the cybersecurity. Even the basic thing like COVAS top 10, uh, things like um, command injection, SQL injection, only 11% of the developers actually can fix things like that. And that's miserable. And we need to change that, right? So that's a big hole there. And when you need to train the people, uh, developers, um, administrators, um, then what we believe that, that PowerPoint is not the way to go. So you can't really train pilots by PowerPoint. So we also believe that, that cybersecurity is something which is really hands-on and you have to really you know, go deep, uh, look how it actually works, and you then get a lot of experience out of that. So let me show how it works. We developed a cyber simulator where you can actually play use real attacks and we can measure your skills and see how good you are. So let's see the first, first demo then. Um, it's about ransomware. So um, I'm going to show you um, how um, in this simulated environment ransomware works and how many troubles you might, might get. So this is um, um, our environment, uh, web-based, so you log in, so you don't have to download any ransomware to your laptop. Uh, you can try, actually. But. And uh, so it's a it's fully func uh, functional system, and let me just open a virtual teaching assistant, because it's a simulation, and you want to um, make sure you understand what you're going to do. All our labs are story-based, so in, in this story, um, there is a company called SSH Security, and you are expecting uh, mail from them, a uh, job offer or something like that. And you're going to get that email. And uh, here is an email client, and um, as you can see, it's, it's also a real one, and the email, email was sent just a couple of minutes ago or when, we, uh, when I opened the, opened the lab. And over here, uh, they also sent you uh, a spreadsheet, Excel, uh, where you can calculate your salary and compare what you can do there, and it's terribly interesting, of course. So you really want to do that. It's not good practice to open it, but uh, in this, this scenario, we actually ask that you would, would do that. So let's save it. To the download. Just having trouble. In keep, keep, okay, and save. And now, because we really need to understand how much we would... I would make there. I really want to open it. And uh, this cancel. And because I want to calculate, right? So I, I, I just enable editing. I uh, enable content. I'm, I'm happy to see that so I'm going to be very rich. And, um, and, and something happened. Crypto locker. Uh, and this one is a real one. So um, it's, it looks like real stuff, and actually this is a real malware, so Marcus had to design it. The main problem was not to design that unique malware, but to make it sure that if you decide to download it, it's safe. So it works only in our environment, yes, it has a built-in triggers. Okay, so you can go and look, is it, is it really real one? So, um, 
we got the files, I believe, somewhere here. They are really locked, so it's actually working, I think. Now you go back to teaching assistant, because teaching assistant helps you probably out. And let's go to the next step. We did this one, we enabled, we downloaded. And now, what I'm gonna do with that? Where is my, over here, yes. So what is the next step? And teaching assistant asks you from you that you have any bitcoins, by the way. And this is what we try to do, make it like a story, but it would create some emotion around the learning, just to make sure that actually it would motivate. And this one was designed um, uh, just to make sure that people understand the defensive part, what you can do with malware, uh, what they can't do, and also a bit of offensive part, how the botnet actually works. We have a minor issues here, but, uh, but yeah. We're gonna continue in a second. Um, and obviously, easiest would be start, uh, restore everything from um, uh, backups, but um, in this story, we tell that backups are for weak people. We're gonna take that botnet down and take our data back. But anyway, everything is real, as real as it gets in, in real environment. Now, this type of the uh, lab was um, one of the training labs, uh, not the challenge. Uh, so you are guided through the um, uh, lab, and you can do a number of experiments to understand how it actually works. Let me show you other one, which is um, um, designed for developers to make sure that they understand command injection. The user interface looks a little bit different. Uh, it's a bit lighter, and uh, developers like it. So over here, you have your um, uh, target sites, uh, actual WordPress application, and there's a number of vulnerabilities there. Uh, the code of that WordPress uh, application and um, uh, command line interface, so you can, if sometimes you need that as well. So in this case, um, we have um, somewhere in that, in, on that uh, page, command injection. So the first task is find the command injection, then to use it to make sure that you understand how it works and how dangerous it is. And then finally, remove it, so the fix the codes uh, to make sure that you understand how that works. So let me show a couple of two steps. The third one is gonna be for you, so you can figure it out by yourself. So I'm already in, so I know where the command injection is, so I go to directly to profile, and now I try to type with one hand. Fortunately, I've done that before, and uh, Here we go. So this is a classical example of the command injection, and this should never, never happen in real code. <laughs> Happens every day. Okay, we found it, and again, developers can use uh, real tools, uh, like they would use in real worlds here. So they can do, uh, uh, for example, um, inspect elements, because we ask in, in virtual teaching assistant what is the name of that, um, that field. And down there, you can see it's U-R-A. Over here, some is U-R-A, right? Now, uh, you can get also hints, but uh, in this case, we go back, and I'm gonna put U-R-A into this one, right, and commit. And it was right transfer, obviously. Now, let's use it. Uh, let's try to get uh, passwords, again, to show how dangerous it is that basically the, the door is open if the, if the command injection is, is there. So let me just collapse this and do another little thing here, which is a slash cat coin. So this is, oh, God. let me try again. It's so small, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to find the right one here, yeah? And I can't type with one. Okay, here we go. And here is a password. So, and this is designed to be experience for the developer to understand that basically the door is open. You can actually manipulate everything if the uh, vulnerability is there. So, problem-based approach, we don't start from slides, we start for actual attacks. That probably makes you wonder what's going on. Um, you know, create some emotions, and that emotion, you know, burns the skills into your head for end of the time, hopefully. Now, uh, we have a number of, we cover um, for developers, uh, web application security essentials, most of the things what are in our top 10. 
And uh, so you get pretty good understanding of that. But what we have seen is that it's not a good idea to give everything at once to developers. It's better actually to slice it. So three to four modules every month. And um, we call it persistent training. Like threat is persistent, training is persistent. $50 per month, you're going to access and find to play. And over the time, you build up your, your, your skills and keep them fresh. Now, if you think that you're good, we ask you to come and join our cyber siege. Let me show you how that works. That might be online or on-site event. And um, it's a lot of fun. This one is, is on-site event. Let me start it. So you should defend um, fictional country, service of the fictional country, keep the service up and running. It's hard because our attack bot is you know, super good to create a chaos. Take all your servers down one by one, just real attacks in real system. Now um, you try to figure out what you do about that. Um, uh, videos from a group called Acronymous, not Anonymous, Acronymous, telling that they're going to destroy all the servers. It's fun, but this happens. So actually, we take down those servers one by one. And you're going to see the uh, old reds over the, over the leaderboards to, to, to create a bit of stress. Uh, news clips, just to you know, make it real, as realistic as possible. And by noon, everybody's depressed. <laughs> and then we start to give them hints and instructions and make sure that they actually are able to bring their uh, service up again, just to make sure that they understand that cybersecurity cyber is something you know, fun and not easy, but at least fun and, and great. And if you really rehearsed a lot before and took the persistent training, you have a chance to win that, even if you are not cyber guy, because developers and they're really good, actually. So that's Rangeforce Cyber Simulations. Any questions?